The story began with a place with a decent infrastructure at the region of Zishan City where rich people living in these place with monsters. Gathering have happened after the alliance marriage between the governor and the biggest financial group in Zishan are celebrating their partnership. The bald guy asks his friend if he was going to eat but the guy in a suit rejected his offer after getting confused of how a mere beggar slip into their assembly hall. A beggar kid approaches the maid to ask a piece of blueberry cake for her little sister's birthday. However, the two maid felt disgust at him after being lowly beggar. All of a sudden, a huge shadow appeared behind the kid which scares the two maid at the room. A cyclops appeared behind him that approaches the maids while asking about the blueberry cake. She was startled while she was about to say something but unfortunately, the monster picked up the child as the replacement for his snack before his meal. The monster put the child into his mouth to replace this kid as his snack. The maid told to monster that they actually have blueberry cake but it was too late for this as the monster already ate the kid. Out of nowhere, a rock flew at the cyclops' head. It turns out that his little sister was mad after the monster ate her brother while the others was so shocked of what she just did. The people immediately run away as the monster was moving towards them while the kid still throwing rocks at the monster. The monster mocks the kid about his brother taste. She had nothing to do but to cry while his brother already gone. Meanwhile, an elegant room can be seen with a gold luxury. A guy named Jin greeted his governor about the agreement for a ceasefire into the war between humanity and the monsters since the Zishan region has already begun to recover and rebuild. It turns out that their governor was a Montesixar with his human bride. Everyone felt jealous as President Jin received a huge lucrative positions from the governor while he was serving. Just a moment, the bride claps her hand to call everyone. She called everybody to show her gratitude and ordered all the hunters to block off all exits and not let anyone to leave the place and she also encouraged the people to not be alarmed as the leader of the rebel army is hiding among them. Some of them got courage to ask the hunters about her plan since this was alarming and also some are thinking that they are probably going as a bait. As the hunters explained, everything will be calculated by Miss Yuanjia so they are guaranteed the safety of all guests at this moment. As they are not expect, a large explosion pops up from the doors and all the people flew away because of how powerful it is. They were frightened as they realized that bloods are flows above them so they start to panic. Someone said that in order to celebrate the governor's wedding, he wanted to give a gift to everyone. It turns out that a guy came up while carrying the cyclops' head earlier, and he manages to kill this monster. Miss Yuanjia walks towards him as this guy trying to ruin her marriage while the other was running for their life as soon as they can. Miss Yuanjia knew this guy as Zuo Kai, and high-rank wanted criminal of Zishan region. She was busy dealing with the rebel army so she doesn't want to take personal deal with him but since Zuo Kai came in, she had something for him. She planned that used the hunter's martial arts to take action from the massacre that he was doing. However, Zuo Kai wasn't scared and proudly explained that even how many persons she sent, they all ended up as a corpse. Miss Yuanjia doesn't like stubborn men so he called everyone to take action. The hunters began to move forward towards Zuo Kai in order to capture him since he was the most wanted criminal of Zishan region. Even though he just outnumbered, he just stood his ground while raising his hand while the hunters was going to launch their attacks toward him. Without any ease, he manages to defeat all the enemy that was approaching him. Miss Yuanjia can't believe that a mere S rank hunter took three A rank hunters instantly. While she was spaced out, Zuo Kai suddenly pops up in front of her that made her startled. She got scared as she realized that Zuo Kai already in front of her and going to punish her out easily after working so hard for her ambition. Unexpectedly, Zuo Kai decided to spare her up as he doesn't want to kill women so she has nothing to do with it than accepting the fate. As Zuo Kai passed at her, she smirks while thinking Zuo Kai's arrogancy. She expects that he will be regret sparing her. Suddenly, Zuo Kai decided to give her a powerful blow that made her flew away without any trace. He realized that Miss Yuanjia was already married to a monster that made her unaccountably as a human nor a woman so he decided to punish her. Suddenly, her groom appeared in front of Zuo Kai after getting interested at him. The governor noticed that Zuo has no magic power, not even a monster and obviously not a monster that made him confuse of how did he have too much strength. He clenches his fist and stared at governor while he wanted him to remember something. He explained that he only using martial arts while he was extending his fist to launch an attack at the governor. Zuo Kai manages to make a powerful blow at governor. However, he manages to block Zuo Kai's punch by using his bare hands while he doesn't believe that a mere martial arts could attain this much power as him. Zuo Kai smirks at him. He then used the Golden Bell 18th layer that made his fist transform into a red tainted gloves. He also used the Iron Shirt 12th layer and Black Demon Overlord Body 16th layer and lastly 9 transformation of Golden Body 3rd layer which made himself turning into a red plated demon. Zuo Kai's body turned into a demon armor that made the governor startled as he saw him turn a lot more powerful. 
Without any ease, he dashes in to grab the governor's face as he got excited. He then extended his arm to slam him into the floor and manages to make the governor lay on his back. The governor knew that he is not really human while his blood flow down to his body. He explained that by using the five kin towards Yuan Tech, he able to condense the great drug to surpass the limit of a human race that made him becoming a true immortal. And these incidents happened in the past. As we go back a few years ago in the Marial world, two people was surrounded by multiple beasts and one of his companions starts to worry as the demon beasts are moving towards to corner them. Instead of fighting, he began to panic as they got surrounded. His alliance leader doesn't bother so he keeps fighting on his own in order to survive. Unfortunately, he also received multiple damages while he was busy fighting and he thought that this place might be a trap as he didn't expect this to happen that could lead to their death together. However, a beautiful woman teases him up as in Mountain Sword Alliance leader almost dying so she advises him to suck his internal energy and squeeze his body dry so that the cult leader can kill a few more demonic beasts. One of the Sword Alliance got stopped by a huge feat as they were busy talking. They were so shocked as another giant demonic beast appeared after they managed to kill one by working together. But unfortunately, their current condition was so bad. The Alliance Sword Leader gave up by accepting his fate as he thought this was their end. The giant demonic beast wastes no time and charges to attack them. Out of nowhere, a beam of light from behind him pierced into his chest. The leader of Sword Alliance got confused who made this powerful attack that manages to kill a giant demonic beast easily. It turns out that Zuokai made this and he sarcastically greeted them after being still alive. He immediately noticed Zuokai, the spilleting palm after getting stronger again. The woman earlier wants to dual cultivate with him to be strongest martial artist in history as she tries to seduce him. As expected, Zuokai was a man of culture so he rejects her since he's not interested and he was pursuing the peak of the martial Tao. The alliance sword leader felt relief as Zuokai came right in time so he assumed that he definitely break out of the demonic beast's encirclement. Unexpectedly, Zuokai doesn't want to run away from the people who betray them and he was determined to kill these people. As Zuokai leaving, he knew Zuokai's goal was the Heavenly Sword Sect, Kin Yuan which is the world's number one expert while being surrounded by demonic beasts. Because of teasing him as an old man, he expressed his gratitude while explaining that a mere 200 years old was still very strong so he had no problem. Without any hesitation, Zuokai jumps bravely at the group of demonic beasts. He was determined to kill the person who betrayed them and every demonic beast get in his way resulting in one thing, which is death. On the other side, a guy was bleeding from his mouth. It turns out that the guy was pierced on his chest by the demonic beast while he can't believe what just happened. He was confused at Kin Yuan betrayal so he keeps asking the same question every second. Kin Yuan doesn't speak a single word while he's just watching his comrade dying, but somehow a mysterious figure thanking him for gathering all the experts in the world and ended up dying. The mysterious figure felt annoyed as Kin Yuan doesn't speak that made him feel bored since he hate the reticent people but all of a sudden he felt as someone is coming. Zuo Kai landed on the monster earlier who pierced a guy's chest while the mysterious figure felt excitement to think Zuo Kai was an worthy opponent for him. All of a sudden, Kin Yuan made a slash that almost hit the mysterious figure, but luckily he dodges it. He was determined that Zuo Kai was his opponent and Kin Yuan doesn't want anyone to bother him as he fight him. The mysterious figure only wanted him to help as his job is to keep Kin Yuan safe but he just accept his demand after all. Zuokai asks his reason about joining the demonic beast's clan and his reason is for the peak of the martial Tao. However, Zuokai assumes that Kin Yuan's brain has gone bad to think that he needed to betray his comrades while joining into demonic beasts, which is confusing. He also said that their comrades never understood him and they only wanted the money, authority, honor and power while he assumed that Zuokai and him was the same as him as they both want to explore the illusory legend which is the martial Tao immortality. Therefore, Zuokai find this a stupid idea after he joined himself into the demonic beast to make him an immortal. After all these things he did, he finally found out that the end of martial Tao is already ended which means that immortality has never been exist. However, he still determined on not giving up his dream and surpassed the limit of the human body so he keeps pursuing Zuokai to join him since he had a higher potential than him after transforming into a demonic beast. And once they completed the transformation ceremony, he was sure that they could find the path that belonged to them. The mysterious figure got confused after Kin Yuan Sarsifus's many experts in order to gather the right energy, and now he decided to split it in half with Zuokai. As the mysterious figure remembers, Zuokai was different from the world's strongest sect nor heavenly sword sect but they only needed one successor of the heavenly sword sect every generation. But he was so sure that Zuokai was capable of suppressing all the Mariel artists and entire Mariel world with his strength. 
The mysterious figure decided to offer Zuokai to join them since he was qualified to become one of them but Zuokai was 100% sure to reject his offer. Zuokai acknowledged that they were wrong about the information that Zuokai was second from Kinyuan. A face of excitement burst into him while he was determined to wreck Kinyuan and to kill the mysterious figure. Kinyuan decided to use violence since Zuokai doesn't want to understand him through their language. He then uses his heavenly sword Thousand Shadows. Their attacks collided that made a powerful blows around them. Zuokai teases Kinyuan for Bane Week using the Martial Dao which made him to realize. That's why he can't become an immortal. Kinyuan explains that he was just getting easy into him so he made a sequence of attack but luckily, Zuokai manches to block it all. After the collision, Zukai decided to take his opportunity to launch an attack towards Kinyuan. Zuokai got bored so he asks Kinyuan to make a one final blow to end everything in fastest way. Kinyuan agreed so he used his heavenly sword against Zuokai's fist. Both of them made a powerful attack towards to each other to decide who's the winner for their fight and which of them was the strongest. Due to powerful attack that they made, a cyclone of energy happened at their position. After the attack happened, someone was dripping a blood. It turns out that Kinyuan loses their fight against Chui. He approaches Kinyuan if he is now convinced so Kinyuan assumes that he was just lucky by winning from a one move. Zuokai was determined that he can win against him in countless times against Kinyuan. However, Kinyuan's eye turns black with a dark aura in it while saying that Zuokai was already late since the transformation ceremony was already starting. Kinyuan's body began to be covered in immense energy of dark matter as the transformation ceremony starts. From afar, Zuokai stands firmly while he was waiting for Kinyuan to transform as demonic beast. Every living matter starts to get absorbed as the transformation needed energy from living creature to transform to turn someone immortal. Monsters had gathered while chanting the evolution immortality while transformation ceremony happening. The transformation was almost done. A new appearance of Kinyuan can be seen. Kinyuan transform into a demonic beast that made his power enhance than before. The mysterious figure can't believe of how much the power of Kinyuan have after completing the transformation ceremony, that he even surpassed the legion level. Kinyuan speaks to Zuokai to threaten him as this was his last chance. He extend his arms towards Zuokai as he want him to join at Demonic Beast Clan to conquer the countless worlds beyond the heavens since the world was dying. Zuokai found this funny as he teases Kinyuan's appearance after turning into a demonic beast just to attain the power that he want. Because of how fast things to happen, he didn't expect that Kinyuan was already in front of him while holding his chest. A large amount of energy pierced him after being off-guarded from their conversation. He got mad at Kinyuan after giving him a sneak attack that made him off-guard. While Zuokai was injured, the mysterious figure in Kinyuan decided to open a portal to go for the next world that they wanted to conquer since they are done at this world. Zuokai had nothing to do than watching Kinyuan leaving the world as he was in a brink of death. He doesn't want to accept that he was dying after not reaching the pinnacle of martial arts. The portal starts to close as Kinyuan leave their world. As he watches the portal whirring off, he curses all the traitor to die. As time have passed, he got confused as he woke up in a noisy place after be killed by Kinyuan. As he glances around him, he saw an elegant furniture, luxurious decoration which he never seen before in his entire life. He also noticed the corpses around him along with these. He got confused of what was he wearing. Suddenly, he realized that he was in a different body that has under-exercised muscle and also had no true Kai in his current body. Out of nowhere, a four eyes calls him loudly as he was looking for Zuokai. As he opened that door, he didn't finish his words that even Zuokai don't find the traitor. A shock in his face had been made as he realized that the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Zhengmen was already dead as Zuokai killed him. He got frustrated as the Zhengmen died that could affect the peace agreement will be temporarily suspended so he immediately called Zuokai to go as soon as they can. This guy saw Zuokai only moaning after receiving a huge injury into his body. He came towards Zuokai to check if he was still alive to help him out. He wanted Zuokai to take at the hospital before it was too late so he immediately carry him out. All of a sudden an adult guy came inside seeing four eyes carrying Zuokai's weakened body. Since he was distracted, he didn't see someone's hand that he stepped in. However, even the guy's hand was stepped in. He didn't hear a single scream of pain from him. This made him confuse of what actually happened. He then realized that the people that lying on the ground was already dead. He laughs at them for being Zuokai's craziness after daring to kill the Minister of Foreign Affairs. This guy got confused as these students from the Western Mountain University getting involved with the rebels even though they have bright future ahead from them. Four Eyes was so mad that the reason of them being rebellion was because of preventing the intelligence department to signing the peace agreement. The peace agreement will be signed. The peace between human and monsters will be hard won. 
Four Eyes replied that they are traitors who stepping on the bones of their compatriots and handing over human territory to the monsters since the goal of peace agreement is to kill humans to satisfy the ambition of beasts that never been satisfied. He sarcastically said that they were still alive even though there's a mass killing around them. The guy began furious and choose violence to lecture Four Eyes from his ideal so he dashes in to reach his neck. Four Eyes begging to let him go after the guy chokes him out. Since Four Eyes gone too far and crossed the line, he said that he was the one who's going to die. Just a moment, he let go his grip from his neck. It turns out that he was just kidding and since they are student from the western mountains, they couldn't just die. Both Four Eyes and Zuokai was on the ground, weakened after the confrontation that they meet. Meanwhile, inside the Western Mountains University, a lot of students have been captivated as they were got arrested by the traitors that they said. The Special Intelligence Department got offended that uses his prison to captivate the 196 students from Western Mountains University after causing trouble. The guy was planning to use these students as in living experimental material that could benefit him. However, he was hesitating since the University of the Western Mountains is number one school in the Western Mountains region and once they made trouble, Many big names in politics and business will give him more trouble. He assumed that he was probably scared but he just doesn't want the peace agreement to be affected after the rumors came across the world. However, they were already in a big trouble after the Minister of Foreign Affairs had been already killed by Zuokai, so they are planning to use his skills in martial art. He ignores the threat about Zuokai since he was proudly in C-rank hunter and a warden of a prison. As he heard Zuokai was a martial artist, he began to get interested at him. On the other side, Zuokai woke up after the incident that he got into. As he checks everything around him, he realized that he woke up from a guest room while his injuries are meditated. Therefore, he got determined as he needed to cultivate his Kai as soon as possible because if he didn't, the body that he was using was going to die. While he was meditating, he remembers his past that he was in a poor family that made himself practice his cultivation in order to survive so also going to do this in his current life. Luckily he got a chance to cultivate since the others were busy doing their business outside the room. As he focuses, the pure Kai starts to build up as he is going to extract the pure energy into his body. He was amazed that his current body was also talented as him from his previous life however, he noticed something. The Kai that he was doing suddenly went out of nowhere so he tried other techniques. He tries Amitabha, Innate Kai Gong, the Jade Heart Sutra, the Great Prajna Nirvana Dharma, and lastly Kundalini Yoga. He was disappointed as not a single one of these worked out. All the Kai that he made was disappearing but somehow he felt that his wounds are contrarily healing up. However, he assumed that his body was probably absorbing the Kai that he made that's why it keeps on disappearing so this was new for him. All of a sudden four eyes came up to check him and he felt relief after Zuo Kai woke up and was still alive. The staff from the prison refused to treat him so four eyes tried to treat him only using a bondage. Zuo Kai thanked him for helping him out so he asked Four Eyes' name to repay his efforts sooner. He stated his name as Meng Guangxian which is his classmate and best friend so he thinks that Zuo Kai loses his mind after the incident. Zuo Kai stated that he doesn't remember him nor he doesn't need a friend since this was going to get in his way. Meng Guangxian thought that Zuo Kai probably lost his memory after the incident that happened earlier. Zuo Kai tries to ask Meng Guangxian while acting that he lost his memory so Meng Guangxian was willing to tell him everything. Their conversation starts while Zuokai tries to adopt the life of his recent life. As he learned the current revelation, Zuokai acknowledged that their world was invaded by the monster and lost one-third of humanity, and their university student tried to kidnap the Minister of Foreign Affairs to prevent signing the peace agreement with the monsters, but unfortunately, he killed the Minister of Foreign Affairs that made them put in the jail. Zuo Kai noticed that Meng Guangxian's tone doesn't seem confident after saying that the rebels are not going to abandon them. As Zuo Kai asked about how much does the rebels already kill, he replied that they already took 10,000 monsters and more than 1,300 traitors. Zuo Kai felt glad as they are not bad so he asked how many they already killed last day. Meng Guangxian doesn't remember so Zuo Kai starts disbelief on his words. Zuo Kai furiously said that these people that he trusted were weak so he swore that he was going to take him out by Zuo Kai. A few moments have passed and they immediately go outside the infirmary. Meng Guangxian was worried about Zuo Kai's body after assuming that he was probably not fully healed after only using bondages. As he looks around, Zuo Kai felt weird. Meng Guangxian thinks that he must rest for a while since he's not fully treated. Zuo Kai actually felt weird after noticing their prisoners are living in such a beautiful house and luxurious which made Meng Guangxiao feel disappointed after ignoring everything that's happening. Out of nowhere, someone called Zuo Kai's name. They were admiring him for being still alive after killing the minister and prevented the peace agreement. 
They praised him for being an unbelievable person but somehow, someone found this funny. Meng Guangxian immediately reacted to him after making a sarcastic tone for Zuo Kai's bravery. This guy was Zhuxi, and he was so mad at Zuo Kai after many students thought that he was a hero. He was furious about being captive after all Zuo Kai's secretive killing intent from the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Zuo Kai just turned his back as he doesn't really care about it while Meng Guangxian is trying to justify him from sacrificing Zuo Kai's life in order to stop the peace agreement. Zhu Xuan got mad as their six students that been taken are still coming back after the warden took them so he assumed that they are going to die like those six students. Just a moment, the warden came out from their confrontation. Without any hesitation, Meng Guangxian loudly demand him to get back their classmates after being gone for a few days. However, warden doesn't seem really care and he keeps on teasing them. He ordered his two guards to bring the television to him. The two guards immediately took the television to represent something. Zuo Kai feels excitement after taking this scenario as fun but so on he will be a jailbreaker. Since this was Zuo Kai's first time to see technologies like this, he was ignorant and slapping the television that made the warden frustrated and planning to do something for him later on after killing the minister. Just a second, the warden took out the remote to open the television. On television, they saw a news that talking about the peace agreement, she said that after talking for 30 days. The long-awaited peace has been arrived after a long misunderstanding between humans and monsters. But this day, the humans and monster already reach a peace agreement. They saw the minister and governor extended their arms to agree from the peace agreements of human and monsters. Everyone got shocked as they saw this on the news. They felt disappointed after realizing that all their efforts have gone nothing. Meng Guangxian got speculated about this issue since the foreign minister was already dead. He got curious of how does the peace agreement completed so quickly so he assumes that this was fake. The warden mocks them for being ignorant students to stop the peace agreement. He added that the Western Mountains provisional government was tired for them so they already abandoned and the warden was planning to use them as an experimental subject of his prison. Meng Guangxian got furious as they were going to be his experimental subject so he knew that the media will get to expose them. Therefore, the media already know about this and praised him as he was known for his humans and warcraft experimentation. Therefore, his current interest was Zuo Kai who came back from the dead will be his next experimental subject. But, Zuo Kai doesn't really care and wanted to stop the chit-chat so he challenged the warden. After this, Meng Guangxian and Zhu Xuan was talking about saving themselves since they already had Zuo Kai. However, Zhu Xuan was extremely infuriated at him to pretending a hero after some of their classmates were arrested a few days ago and didn't do anything. Since they were abandoned, their situation was different after the peace agreement were signed so he doesn't want to be a human experimental subject by the warden so they had to join their resistance against the warden to escape the place as soon as possible. Zhu Xuan assumes that he was pointing out saving Zuo Kai but Meng Guangxian's main goal is to save their classmates from the hellish place. One of their classmates kneeled on the ground after losing the hope of escaping since the warden was a hunter, and the prison was also guarded by the monsters. Just as sudden, some students reaches Meng Guangxian to blame him for them being punished like this after failing his whole plan. Behind them was Zhu Xuan who had a grudge against Zuo Kai. Meanwhile, inside the experimental laboratory, two people gathering information for their subject as they were about to begin the experimentation to one of the students of Western Mountains University. It turns out that one of her classmate turned his back from their class group in order to be enslaved for these experimentation. This girl was Sun Meng Yu, a girl who'll do anything to survive even how bad it is. Sun Meng Yu was her best friend so she assumed that she was probably brainwashed by these bad people. She came closer at her while stating her hatred towards rich girls' behavior while she was about to inject something at her. She can't do anything than to beg for her life. A loud scream can be heard outside the door of the laboratory while Warden and Zuo Kai approaching it. Zuo Kai sarcastically told him that the scream that he heard made him feel sleepy so he assumed that this room will torture him. They finally arrive. As they got inside, they witnesses in bizarre scene where a flesh was lying on the ground. Sun Meng Yu's best friend turns into a flesh of a monster while she was enduring all the pain. She begs for someone to help her out. All of a sudden, Sun Meng Yu kicks her out after she felt disgust at her. Her flesh began to stink as her body starts to rot after the experimentation. Warden told him that their experiment failed again so the scientists took the samples to make another experiment to improve the monster transformation. Zuo Kai got shocked as the warden wanted him to show their experiment of human transforming into monsters. The warden agreed at him because he was dreaming of a new world and to become the pioneer who will change everything in human world. Because of this, Zuo Kai felt disappointment as he observed the warden enjoying killing innocent people. He explains that this idea could lead the war ended by transforming all humans into a monster. 
Upon hearing these words, he remembered Kai Yuan's transformation into a monster in order to conquer the world and become immortal. The warden also introduced their tremendous progress for their transformation experiment at Zuo Kai. All of a sudden, he began to get excited as he realized that the people also gave up humanity in this world which the same from the world he came from. The warden also got hyped up as he think that Zuo Kai had the same mindset as him. After a long conversation, the warden wants Zuo Kai to become a part of his achievements after assassinating the Minister of Foreign Affairs so he could become a part of his achievement. Out of nowhere, a pink light on his hand starts to envelop him. He got shocked as he felt an immense power hiding through his body after this light envelops him. While he busy to figure out what was happening, the warden and Sun Meng Yu wanted to try the number 4 project of what is the effect when it used into in martial artists. The warden gives him the injection but Sun Meng Yu was scared on Zuo Kai since he was a martial artist that can kill her if she approached him rashly. It turns out that the warden has affair with Sun Meng Yu from the day and night and also he was the one who put the pink aura inside Zuo Kai to restrict his movement from head to toe. Zuo Kai acknowledged that the warden has the mental power that get his interest. The warden proudly asks him if he feel the large gap between martial artist S and hunters then he orders Sun Meng Yu to do the experiment. Afterwards, Sun Meng Yu grabs the injection. She was determined to survive after all these things happen from her. The warden was maniacally laughing as he thought that martial arts are useless since being a monster was more valuable. She dashes towards Zuo Kai while saying his farewell as an useless hero. All of a sudden, Zuo Kai manages to speak that made them shock. They were startled as they saw Zuo Kai move on his own even the warden used the mental power to restrict his movement other than that. He also manages to pierce the injection at Sun Meng Yu's neck. She panicked as the syringe got into her neck while getting confused of how can Zuo Kai manage to move. Without any hesitation, he extracted the syringe at Sun Meng Yu's neck that made her to feel something throughout to her body. The warden was confused since he was sure that he immobilized Zuo Kai with his power. However, Sun Meng Yu calling the warden after she felt something through her body. She suddenly transformed into a monster which looks like a faceless void from Dota 2. Luckily, the warden dodged her attack but it was unfortunate for his scientist after he was the one who got caught. Out of nowhere, he heard Zuo Kai counting from behind him. So he got furious as he asked Zuo Kai of what is he counting about. It turns out that he was counting the time where his injury take fully recover. Just a sudden, he lunges at the warden and slams him into the ground with unhuman force. Thank you for watching. If you like this story please comment next part. I hope you like our today's story. See you next time goodbye.